What's up guys? So today we're going to be talking about uh, what you need to do to turbo swap your non-turbo first-gen legacy. Um, this has been long overdue for this car, but I'm just going to go through um, what you'll need to do it correctly and uh, basically just how to do it. So the first clip you'll see is actually a time lapse of us swapping the front subframe. Um, this is a turbo first gen front subframe. It uh, was from a different car that we have that's another project and got upgraded to an STI setup. So this one um, came with a steering rack that was not leaking as well as has the uh, hump for the up pipe to go past and has the turbo first gen uh, power steering lines where the non-turbo one just kind of goes straight here and it would hit the exhaust if you don't bend it so the turbo one goes back like that and of course like a power steering pump that wasn't leaking and overall just a lot nicer we also swapped the transmission to uh, phase two five speed um, that was from uh, my car that my uh, white 91 ss that is getting a six speed swap so um, transmission should be better and then got an entire uh, boost control setup with the section of the harness from a parts car. So we will be uh, at some point going through the wiring and figuring out what exactly we need to hook up to the ECU and uh, to get a actual turbo ECU running in this car. So yeah, I think uh, we got to get the engine in here. First, so that's what we're doing today is we're just going to drop the engine in should be pretty straightforward um, so we'll try and get a time lapse of that Also talk about the intercooler setup um, so I'm going to be using my old air to water uh, JDM intercooler and so for this bash bar that we have here uh, my cooler from my old setup didn't fit in here because this car is AC and I definitely want to keep AC this time so um, ended up going with a smaller one this one's from silicone it was like 180 bucks uh, just Made some brackets uh, right there, um, and then I added some mesh uh, in here, where this is all TIG welded on all the way down, so I don't know if you can really see that. So that should keep it protected. Um, I, before I had a lot of rocks hitting the AC condenser, and I definitely don't want that happening anymore, plus uh, don't want that happening to the intercooler. So that is running two hoses right over here so uh, one hose goes to this is a Mustang Terminator uh, supercharged um, air to water intercooler pump so this is from like a Terminator Mustang basically um, so the inlet is sucking from the cooler and the outlet is pushing up through that hole into the engine bay just like that so it's pushing into the intercooler and then it pushes out of the intercooler back through this hole and to the top of the cooler so I actually wanted these 
um, swaps. I wanted it to push downhill and suck from uphill just to make it easier on the pump. But with the uh, just the shape of the pump and this bracket, um, it just wasn't going to happen. Uh, it, it would not have fit in here nearly as nicely or neatly as this. So um, I believe this is how I had it set up on my old car anyway, and it worked just fine. So, uh, and then I just put in some riv nuts right there for those. If you can actually see it, you can kind of see one right there. But basically just drill a hole, put a rivet in there, bolt it up. Pretty simple. So this is the uh, engine that we'll be putting in today. It's uh, basically a Frankenstein bottom end. It's a 22E block with a uh, 22E block and crank that had really, really minor bearing failure that was caught early. And we had the crank polished, uh, new OEM bearings, and then STI... 257 rods with uh, brand new 22T pistons and rings. Um, and then I honed it myself. It's kind of an experiment as far as the short block. It might not last, who knows. Um, it's pretty much just spare parts thrown together for cheap. Hopefully it works out, we'll see. And then the heads are actual 22T heads that I had fully rebuilt. Um, the lighting's a little weird if I walk over here, but... Uh, Genuine 2 t heads, fully rebuilt. Um, these are 040 gaskets, um, copper coated. So they are, it's gonna be a little bit higher compression. Um, and then TD04 with a uh, silicone 90 on it. Got the old VF11 oil line running it. Silicone 90, that's gonna go to a uh, Apexi intake. Parent manual boost controller, pretty basic. Um, obviously a 2 t intake manifold. Um, and yeah, just uh, a lot of spare parts. I've got a oil pressure sensor hooked up right here. And then it does have, obviously you can't really see it, but there is a 10 mil STI oil pump in there to try and keep it happy because uh, I'm not so sure about the bottom end, so just give it lots of oil pressure and hope for the best. So the first thing we need to do is, this is the old engine, the 22E, and uh, I need to get this clutch off and swap it over. This clutch is already a WRX 06 plus uh, push style clutch, and uh, it worked great before, and I'm gonna transfer it over. It obviously will hold lots of horsepower for what we're doing. Um, I think the WRX that this clutch comes with is 265 horsepower, so should be no problem uh, holding our little TDO 422T. So, and as far as what's going to be running it, um, this is the 22E harness. So uh, this is a two-plug car, so not the three-plug. So had to keep that. So I just swapped this over from the original engine. Um, it's got the 22T crossover pipe with the coolant sensors over on this side instead of where the turbo is. So uh, these wires, which there's three of them, there's one for the gauge, two for the ECU uh, sensor. And those just have to be extended over from there. And then got a uh, nice OEM 22T ECU. Um, just totally stock, stock injectors, just little pinks. Um, and then for this guy, uh, there will be extra pins to add in for the turbo sensors, like the map sensor and boost controller mainly. And, uh, and then the cam and crank uh, signal wires are actually swapped. So those will just depin and swap and then uh, add in our turbo sensors. And this should just plug right into the harness and work totally fine. And one other thing I wanted to mention is uh, because this is a phase two transmission, I did uh, grind down this bell housing bolt hole because uh, we're not using it anyway because our block doesn't have a hole for it. But the hump from it, when it's normally there, comes up to like here. And that actually interferes with the 
single cam 22T turbo bracket. So uh, you'll just want to grind that down if you have a phase two trans and single cam heads. If you have dual cam heads, it's not a problem at all. Seems fine. All right, we get the engine stand taken off. We're gonna put the uh, clutch and flywheel on. It's all in there. Um, I think uh, the next video is going to be uh, going over a lot of the little things. Um, obviously, a lot of this is going to depend on your exact setup and you know what turbo intercooler and stuff you're running. Um, the stuff I'll be really specific about is the stuff that will apply to everybody who wants to use an actual turbo ECU and wire it in properly. So. We'll, make sure in the next video that we go over all this wiring what is necessary to hook up and where um still need to do some research before that but it shouldn't be too big of an issue um so there might be a lot of little stuff that's already done in the next video and we'll just kind of go over it uh for my particular setup and um one thing that i forgot to get a clip of is uh we actually found that the fork which is an 06 uh WRX 06 plus WRX fork for the to match the clutch was actually interfering with the inside of the bell housing of the 03 Legacy 5 speed. Um, and so we actually clearanced it with a file. And I believe that that might be related to my last engine that I had uh, bolted up to this transmission had a thrust bearing failure after only like 2,000 miles. Uh, so that might actually be the reason for that. So if you're using a non-turbo uh, phase two five speed with a 06 plus WRX clutch setup, definitely uh, check if the fork is going to interfere. Um, I have some pictures of it that we might be able to clip in here for you to look at. Um, but that was definitely an issue and I'm glad I got it taken care of so I don't have the same issue on this engine. Cross your fingers. Um, but I think that's going to do it for today. So thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time.